There are two kinds of meditation. The kind where you stop and think, and the kind where you stop and don't think. The Buddha calls these directed and undirected meditations. Undirected is when nothing much is weighing down the mind. You simply let go of your concerns and find yourself with the breath. You settle in with the breath. You're mindful, alert, yet ardent. To stay with the breath. And whatever thinking you do has to do only with the breath itself and the mind's relationship to the breath. The directed thought and evaluation that will eventually get you into right concentration. That's undirected. Directed, the type of meditation where you have to stop and think, is for times when the mind is entangled with concerns, worries, responsibilities, and it can't let them go easily. And that's when you have to think your way out of them so you can settle down with the breath. So this is a good time to stop and think, because there are a lot of things to weigh down the mind. Aging, illness, and death, which are ever-present, are now more blatantly pre present. The sense of the moving in and cutting off a lot of our hopes and desires, many of the hopes and desires we feel are perfectly legitimate. Gives a sense of frustration. But you always have to ask yourself when you're frustrated, is it the problem with the goal? Have you chosen the wrong goal or have you chosen the wrong means? You have to sort through your desires, figure out what exactly is feeling frustrated. Then, if it's a problem with the goal, then you can ask yourself, well, what do you want out of life? What would be a better thing to look for? As the Buddha said, once you have a body, the body is subject to all kinds of attacks, starting from when you're a child. Sticks and stones could come your way because you had a body. If you didn't have a body, these things wouldn't come. Aging, illness, and death come because you were born with a body. So one thing you might want to ask yourself is, wouldn't it be better to look for a happiness that doesn't require a body? Remember that life was not something that was thrust on you. You went for it. As the Buddha said, craving is what makes us go from one body to the next, in hopes that the next body will satisfy our cravings. So you can't blame your predicament on other people. I think I've told you the story of the woman who was a student of a John Fuings. She was a nurse, and she found herself the victim of a lot of gossip at the hospital where she worked. And one day she was feeling really frustrated and overwhelmed. So she went to sit and meditate with the John Fuing, and she happened to get an image in her meditation of a hall of mirrors. She saw herself reflected back, back, back in two different directions, forward and past. Made her think about rebirth and how many times she'd been reborn and probably how many times she'd been the victim of gossip. So after she left her meditation, she went and mentioned the vision to Jean Fuang, thinking that he would sympathize with her. His response, however, was like a splash of water in her face. He said, well, you were the one who wanted to be born. Who are you going to blame this on? It's our desire to find happiness in certain ways that makes us take breath. Sometimes when people would die, their relatives would go see a John Cha. They'd ask, why did so-and-so have to die? They'd say, because they were born. He didn't mention bad karma from the past. 
Well, there's karma enough simply in being born. Once you're born, that's, you're going to die. And there's no guarantee how long you're going to have. I was talking recently with a friend who said he was struck by how he felt that it was not right that young people die, that there's something that should happen only to the old. But as soon as you're born, the possibility of death is always there. I mean, some people are born and don't even make it out of the womb. Or they come out and they survive just a few days and then they're gone. We've had the opportunity to be human beings long enough, so we've learned something about language, we've learned about the Dharma. We've had good opportunities so far. How much longer they're going to last, we don't know. But you have to remember, death is not the end. And you can find hope in that, and you can also find a sense of threat. If you're not skillful, you come back in the wrong ways. It's going to be hard to find the Dharma again. And you're going to be suffering again and again. So you ask yourself, what kind of happiness would you want that would not involve having to have a body? There are the formless happinesses of the jhanas, the formless jhanas. Of course, the irony there is to get into the formless jhanas, you first have to go through form, i.e. go through the body. Get the processes of bodily fabrication, i.e. the breath, and your mental fabrication, and your verbal fabrication, get these all smoothed out. So you can see the mind clearly. This is where we have to deal with the body first, is the interference of the breath, the interference of the pains in the body, make it hard to see the mind in and of itself. So we have to work through the body first. We think in these ways as, ways as a way of getting the mind to finally settle down. In John Mahabhu's images of two different kinds of trees, undirected meditation, he says, is like a tree out in the middle of a meadow. You want to cut it down, it doesn't involve much calculation as to which direction you should, should cut it. Just whichever one seems to be most natural, you cut it and it's down. Directed meditation, where you have to think your way through issues of the day, issues in life, before the mind is willing to settle down. And that's like a tree among other trees. Its branches are entangled with the other trees, and the other trees may not provide many openings for it to fall. So you have to think strategically which branches you cut, which direction you're going to cut it down, or if you have to cut it down in stages. But then when you've thought it through, then you follow through. You finally do get the tree down. So if you find your mind entangled with issues from the internet, and too many people are spending too much time on the internet right now, our normal social functions are cut off, social interactions are cut off, so we in interact through the net, that's a dangerous place to be. All sorts of theories, all sorts of ideas are out there. And they're not there to help you get your view straight, get your values straight. You get your values straight by sitting very quietly and thinking through what do you really want out of life? And what kind of desire is a safe desire? What kind of desire do you want to be latching on to if you find that you can't stay in this body any longer? When you realize you want to go beyond even the formless, States, in other words, to total release. Then the issues of the world begin to fade, and your task becomes clear. You've got to get the mind to settle down. So you can see its processes clearly, and you see where is the craving coming from, the craving that keeps you going. When you think in these ways, then you've thought well. And you know you've thought well, because then you can go to the, the stopping and not thinking kind of meditation. And really get to work. <laughs>